What's going on everybody? Pat from Obscure Reference here and we got another movie review if you can't tell by the title of this video or the background that I'm using for this scene setup. It's Ghostbusters Afterlife time baby. Bustin makes me feel good. I'm sorry. So yeah this movie just came out this last weekend. I went to it myself. I didn't John and Austin weren't super interested so it's just me today so we're doing a little bit differently. Uh, so yeah, we're talking Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, the sequel to Ghostbusters Afterlife, which is the sequel to Ghostbusters 2, which is the sequel to Ghostbusters 1, and I could go on. It continues the story of the Spangler family as they move into the old firehouse in New York City, and uh, hijinks ensue. And some are a little spooky. Ooh. So it's directed by Gil Keenan, who, um, if that name doesn't sound super familiar to you, I don't blame you. He did uh, Monster House and The City of Embers, just to name a couple of his quick hits, but those are pretty er, fairly dated at this point, but I, I do like Monster House. Um, and I can kind of see some of the connections there. There's a little bit of a, a horror vibe to this that's not super like kid-friendly, and, you know, it, we'll get to that. Uh, but... The uh, main cast is mostly comprised of people from the last movie, uh, with a couple of key additions in Patton Oswalt and Kamal Nanjiani. Um, and yeah, those are the big ones. Uh, there's not a whole lot because there's way too many characters as is that are returning from the last movies, on top of the original Ghostbusters, including Annie Potts, who I'm thrilled to have in this movie and thrilled to have her in uniform. But there's a lot to balance here, and I'll get to that. Uh, yeah, so yeah, Celeste O'Connor, who was in the last Ghostbusters movie, who's also in Madame Web, comes back here, and it's like, she can't catch a break. I, <laughs> she doesn't get a lot to do here. I Neither does the other returning side character from Afterlife Podcast. Um, that's just one of my problems. We'll get to it. Um, yeah, those are the main beats right off the bat, though. Right off the bat. I just need to get it out there. I've seen the review scores on Rotten Tomatoes, on Metacritic, uh, all over the place on IGN giving it a 4 out of 10 lower than a Madam Web, their Madam Web score which you know there's a review the way the review things works a little differently than most other places I think um, just because they have so many different people writing these reviews it's not the same person writing both of them. anyway I'm, I digress um, I don't get why that their score for this movie is that low I think there's a few things wrong with this movie I think the pacing's off. I think it's because it starts slow, and then the final act is just so rushed. It almost, I almost got whiplash. Like honestly, like we get we get ready to fight the final boss, and then boom, it's like there, and then boom, it's over. Like huh? So it, it goes by very quickly after the long buildup. I would have liked maybe a little bit more, and um, the way things are kind of left off, it's like I I don't know. Like, it didn't feel super satisfying, which leads me to my next criticism of this movie. It's there's too many uh, characters that have to balance, too many storylines that have to juggle, and only a couple of them work really. Uh, you have um, McKenna Grace as Phoebe. Uh, she's trying to balance being a kid, but also wanting to inherit her grandfather's legacy and be a Ghostbuster. You have, and I'm trying to be spoiler free here. If you're thinking about going to see it, um, you have. Paul Rudd is Gary Gruberson trying to find his place in the Spangler family. Uh, you have Dan Aykroyd, whose passion for ghostbusting could get him and other people around him hurt, and he's not ready to let that go. Um, and you have, you know, I could go on. There's like a million different threads here. Kamal Nanjiani's thread. There's, um, you know, again, I could go on. And I think only a hand, couple of them really feel like they get a resolution that's earned and even then that's being pretty generous uh there's a lot that happens in the third act that they're like oh this is the big payoff for the storyline it's like it doesn't feel like it um and i can't get too much into that without spoiling anything um so maybe i'll save a little spoiler free section for the end of this um but yeah i so those are my big criticisms right off the bat. There's too many things that we need to juggle. There's some aspects of this movie that don't feel really Ghostbustery. Um, and if you've seen the movie, you probably know what I mean. Uh, there's a certain character in here who has. Well, I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. Um, it doesn't feel super Ghostbuster like. And uh, not that it was inherently bad. It's not. It's It just felt off, is all. 
that being said, I, I will say too, the writing isn't always great, but I did get a lot of laughs out of this movie. Um, nothing that I'll remember in a week's time, but still, I had a good time watching this movie. Because uh, for all that, those criticisms that, criticisms that I laid on this movie, this is a fun movie. I think, I'm, I'm glad I watched this in theaters. I'm glad I watched this with a group of people. I, I had a great crowd with this movie, I, I gotta say. They were laughing at every joke. And even if it didn't work for me, I, it worked for somebody in that theater. So I got I to gotta give the movie credit for that. Um, and specifically, I got to give the crowd credit for that. Because I think they made me enjoy this movie a lot more, more than I probably would have by myself. Uh, so, let's see. Did that. Um, I want to shout out, because, yeah, of the main cast, it's really Carrie Coon's character, uh, whose name I'm blanking on right now. Uh, Paul Rudd and McKenna Grace that really do the best uh, out of everyone. I think Dan Aykroyd does a pretty good job with what he's given. Um, I just don't think the writing really supports what his role is. Uh, Finn Wolfhard just, you know, he's like one of the big faces on the poster and he gets nothing to do. Um, you see in the trailers he deals with Slimer. That's really about it. Like, honestly, um, not a whole lot of payoff, not a whole lot of a plot going on with him. It's kind of unfortunate i i hope that they are able to rectify that in the third one we'll see because i imagine we'll get a third one i think this one is tracking to do pretty well financially am i out of focus it doesn't matter but uh outside of that cast we have the uh, og ghostbusters we have um winston's back um and we so is um gosh i'm gonna forget i'm i'm a terrible ghostbusters fan right now hold on we're gonna look i gotta make sure i get this right uh, Ernie Hudson, yep, there you go. Ernie Hudson's back is uh, Winston, and so is Bill Murray as Peter Venkman, uh, and they're not really around a whole lot. You have uh, Winston around to kind of tell Ray, well, you're getting a little too old for this pal, and he's kind of the wet blanket, and Venkman just hardly is around at all. He's a cameo at best, truly, and then he comes back for the third act. Um, Andy Potts is around a little bit more than, than uh, Bill Murray is, but you can kind of tell that, you know, after they had that uh, moment in Ghostbusters Afterlife, they're trying to tone down how much the OG Ghostbusters were using, which is fine. I want these movies to be more about the new crew than the old crew, but I do get a little bit of a rush seeing the old crew with the new crew with all their sidekicks. I think seeing a group of Ghostbusters this big is fun, even if they're not, it's not well balanced. Um, so that leads me to the side cast. Speaking of, I gotta, gotta mention, um, Kamal Nanjiani's character. He's actually pretty fun. He's pretty consistently, he gets, he got, he got consistently the most laughs, I think, out of, um, my showing. He's got, he's got a good vibe going for him. He's got, he's a fun character. I don't love his arc. Um, he's around a lot more than you would think, uh, Pat Oswalt around just as much as you think. He's got some good bits, um, but he's really not super important. But uh, Celeste O'Connor as Lucky and uh, Logan Kim as podcast, they they do the best they can with what they're given. But man, they're just they're just there to be like, hey, I was in the last movie. You can tell, you can definitely tell. And you have a couple of new characters as well, like um, this uh, ghost named Melody and also some another uh, assistant to uh, who was it Raymond or Ray uh, Dr. Lars and again they don't really do much it feels like even though some of them are more pivotal to the plot than you would expect uh, but we also bring back William Atherton as a uh, peck and I think that's a really fun choice I think it's mostly played for nostalgia especially uh, at a couple different scenes uh, but that being said it's weird that he's still in a position of power after everything that happened in the original Ghostbusters, but I mean, I digress. So I really don't think for as big as this crew is, for as much time as for as much as they want us to care about this crew, I don't think we get there. Um, I think we mostly, I mostly cared, only cared about uh, Phoebe and the parents, and that's it. Not even Finn Wolfhard. It's like, oh yeah, he's there. I. I Forgot about him, honestly. Um, yeah, uh, what else? Uh, there's people are saying there's a lot of like nostalgia and like cameos and callbacks to the original. 
and yeah, there are some of those. Um, I won't say what they are because they are fun moments in the movie, but I'm not going to say that there's too many or that they're jingling in your face and that it's distracting. I, not at all, like Star Wars Episode Seven. Like, they're there, and if you know, funny, cool, great. If you don't, then whatever. It's It's just a fun joke that plays almost as well now as it did back then. So I... I don't understand that kind of criticism where people are saying there's too many, you know, Easter eggs or references. It's really not as bad as people are making it out to be. Um, and all in all, honestly, I, I did have a lot of fun with this movie. I, I did rag on it for, you know, my big, my two big complaints, which would be the uh, overloaded cast and the pacing, I think, would be it. Uh, the editing's fine. Nothing. I mean, it's not great, but it's not also worse. And the writing is serviceable. I don't think it really helps the movie much, truly, but it doesn't hurt it that badly either. Um, but I do gotta say, I think the the tone that this movie set for itself, like right from the beginning, from the cold open, haha, <laughs> um, is genuinely creepy. And um, I was like a little concerned. There was like a, a little kid sitting next to me. I was like. Now, I wasn't watching him, but I was, like, wondering, like, how is he going to handle this? Like, there's a lot that's in this movie that, or, like, people are actually dying, and it's kind of intense. And there's some pretty creepy ghosts. Like, I'm, I'd be a little scared if I were watching this as a kid, like, truthfully. So, um, I do got to give it props to that, and I do think they're able to balance that with enough levity so that you're not too scared or too tense. Um, even if not all the jokes land. Uh, so, I yeah, at the end of the day... This is a PG-13 movie. I think that's a good rating for this movie. Uh, and I, I did enjoy my time with this movie. I'm probably not going to remember much of it in a couple of you know days, even a week. Uh, and that, that does, you know, I, I, I want better from Ghostbusters. The original is so iconic, but I don't know if you can ever reach that level again. Um, and I do like Afterlife, but I was thinking about it the other day and saying, well, I don't know. I think Afterlife was good and i probably prefer that over this but even that i can only tell you the big beats from that movie and that's about it um so hopefully this does well hopefully we get another one i do want i enjoy watching these new ghostbusters movies um and i want them just i only want them to keep getting better that's all i want um so yeah with that if you're a Ghostbusters fan, go see it. If you're not, if you haven't watched any of the Ghostbusters movies, you might have a hard... I don't think this is going to change anything for you. Um, if you've seen the first two and you haven't seen Afterlife, um, you might be a little confused as to all the characters are, but like I said, none of them really do much to matter. Uh, and all in all, I think this is a solid addition to the Ghostbusters franchise. I think there's some really great ways in which they expand the world. And the way that things end kind of leaves it open for, you know, a couple of sequels. They could even, you know, it kind of felt like at the end, I don't even want to say that, like they could jump into a TV show um, after the way this ends. So I, there's a lot of fun stuff here. It's fun for Ghostbusters fans. It's, I, it might be a little intense for kids, but there's a lot of good laughs in here. Paul Rudd is just Paul Rudd. You know, he does a good job. Um, and yeah, despite all the um, drawbacks I might have with this, I had a good time with it so so yeah there you go i'd probably give it like um everyone's giving it like a four out of ten five out of ten i'd probably go a little higher put it at like a six out of ten i don't know if i'd go much higher than six and a half um it's a good time like i said but um, it's a little forgettable and i'm probably gonna forget about it in just a few days so yeah with that um uh, yeah, I'll probably just forego. I got most of my complaints out of the way. I, I don't think I need to get into spoilers. So yeah, if you've seen Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, leave your thoughts in the comments. What did you think about it? Do you want more Ghostbusters? Uh, who's your favorite of the OG cast? Um, any any Ghostbusters conversation, I'm down to have. I like talking Ghostbusters. Uh, so yeah, just leave, it, leave a thought down in the comments below. Be sure to leave a subscribe and a like on the video if you enjoyed what you saw here. Uh, and... Follow us on our socials. Links are in the description. And, uh, yeah, we stream every Monday, Thursday with some bonus streams on the side. We'll let you know on our on our social medias and our community feed on YouTube. So you'll be able to keep up with us there. And, uh, yeah, we got more reviews coming. We got some more streams coming. We got a whole lot of stuff coming your way. So stay tuned. 
and it has been my pleasure to talk movies to you, with you, with you. Thanks for watching.